Now, taking rolls of camera film on holiday, talking on the landline while your parents were listening in, and writing letters only to wait weeks for a response. What did you find most annoying about being a teenager? A new study has shown that people who were teenagers in the 80s and 90s think that being a teen today is a breeze compared to what they had to endure. 86% claim that they experienced a whole host of annoyances that their children will never have to face. Topping the list with 76% was only having four TV channels. <laughs> Next was having to venture out to rent a movie. And the third most annoying with 69% was having to write out labels for VHS tapes. First world problems. Let's discuss this further with technology writer and broadcaster Kate Bevan and student Emily Dinsmore. Hello to you both. Thank you so much for joining us on Sky News this afternoon. Do you recognise any of those things? I mean, I mean yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only three TV channels um, when I was a teenager, actually. Me too, actually. me too. I don't really remember. I mean, I remember having, having to go out to get videotapes, but again, that stopped when I was quite young. I mean, our local like blockbuster must have shut down by the time I was seven or eight, <laughs> I think, I, I guess. <laughs> I think we're going to feel old in this one, aren't we? I Kate? think we are. You remember those. Like, I remember I when videotapes were new. I remember getting a video recorder, and this was probably when I... Whether it was VHS or Betamax, yeah. we couldn't decide which exactly. one to go with. Yeah, and I remember buying a video recorder. In fact, I think I rented a video recorder when I first bought my flat, which is only 30 years ago. So, yeah, this some feels like first world problems to me. <laughs> But you, the, the thought behind this latest survey is, in fact, that it's much easier to be a teenager now than it was when we were teenagers. Um, you would say in response to that? I would say yes, it probably is. I think technology has been a great advantage for young people and, and kind of growing up with it at, at our fingertips as far as, like, I, as far back as I can remember. I've always had a computer and a mobile phone. It's been a massive help in terms of, you know, schoolwork and communicating with friends. Yeah, life's been great as a young person <laughs> in, like, in the millennium so yeah totally I would say that it is a bit of a breeze about having a mobile phone when I was a teenager we I used to have to walk about a, I used to have to <laughs> about a quarter of a mile because we didn't have a phone at home didn't so you? we used to have to go and use the local phone box well, I, I, now I've got a phone on the desk when I was a student I did my degree on a portable typewriter and we didn't have phones. Nolly Betty no, it wasn't actually, it was a brother, it was okay. my mum, so it's, I think the typewriter's probably actually older than I am because I inherited it from my mum. But also I lived in flats where we had coin meters and didn't have phones. In fact, my third year I lived in a flat that did have a phone and that was luxury. Yes, luxury. Luxury. You were lucky. <laughs> uh, but, look, but with all the new technology that is immediately to hand comes challenges and pressures, doesn't it? Because I, I check my phone all the time and if I don't, People have expected me to, so they want to know why I didn't respond in a nanosecond. So that adds pressure. Yeah, I, I think people kind of think that, that there might be a pressure there that exists, but I don't know, for, for my generation, it's just, it has always been there and it's been such a useful tool. I remember coming home from school and just sitting on MSN all night talking to my friends. I've never seen it as a pressure per se, and I think people switch off if they want to switch off. You can kind of take yourself away from that world, but I think the benefits of it far outweigh the kind of the negatives. Just being connected with the entire world, you know, friends and family abroad. People never had that before 50, 60 years ago, so it's, it's One a of the great challenges thing. for me is that um, uh, people, when they have a view on my presenting, uh, would write in <laughs> green ink and send it to the head of news, and it would take a fortnight to get here. Now it's on Twitter, on Twitter. <laughs> within a second. <laughs> exactly, but then at least you can filter it out with Twitter as well, whereas you couldn't actually filter out the green inks. It would always eventually land on your desk. That's true, yep. that's true. What do you think, what, what would you uh, choose, Kate, if you had to, as the best um, developments in technology over the last 20, 30 years? Oh, that's quite a question. I think actually probably the mobile phone because it's such a useful tool. I mean, you see an awful lot of people complaining that, oh, people always got their heads stuck in their phones, but it's not necessarily stuck in a phone. It might be stuck in a book. It might be stuck in some research. It might be stuck in, I don't know, talking to a grand in Australia via Skype. It's a tool that, you know, connects you to so many things. It's not just a phone. So for me, certainly the mobile phone. I would agree with that. Yeah. I think so, yeah. And also, presumably, the fact that you know, you've got two or three hundred TV channels to choose from now. Like yeah. you, I remember when there were only three. I was a student when Channel 4 started, yeah. and it was really amazing. I was a television presenter. <laughs> <laughs> But presumably you find that quite useful as well. Yeah, you have again, no concept of what we're talking no, about. No, it's, just, it's always been there, and so you don't even recognise it as being something that's kind of inherently a good thing. Because it's just always been there. But of course it is. It's yeah, it's amazing. You don't even have to go to the cinema. You can watch films in your bedroom or in your living room. I mean, that, or on that's amazing. Xbox. Exactly. You have to get off the sofa to change the channel. Can you imagine the very idea? <laughs> uh, but another thing that I notice, especially with my son, is that he's, if we're sat together having dinner. 
uh, unless we've got the rule that you have to put your phones in the middle of the table within seconds he's on the phone he's just whatsapping i'm just whatsapping my girlfriend i'm just doing this i'm just doing that do you not think that it kills the art of conversation i think young people are still or kind of people from my generation are still more than capable of kind of having conversations i grew up yeah as i said sitting on msn and texting my friends and still managed to be able to hold a conversation and, and do all the things that the previous generation were able to do i i don't kind of see it as being negative in any sense really and, and you know kids and young people know when to put it down no they not, do oh, well, when they're told no, they to do. they put it they down do <laughs> maybe they're trying to tell you something Kay. yes <laughs> maybe they are maybe they are but when we were talking about you know the advances in technology and the fact that let's just go back to this list should we topping the list 76 percent for tv channels next was the venture to rent a movie 72 percent we've talked about that as well the third most annoying with 69 percent was having to record uh, the top hits off the radio and pause the tape oh, yes. every time the dj spoke you remember doing that i had to make sure you hit play and record you know at the same time about? <laughs> no. Okay. Do you want to explain? So when we were listening to the charts on the radio, Radio One on a Sunday evening, um, to, you had a ghetto blaster, a ghetto blaster like this, and to record it, you had to press play and record on the cassette deck, otherwise it wouldn't. It wasn't record. touching. You had to push it down. Push it down, and then pause it so you try and get the DJ chatter out of your recording. So it was very stop and start, and you had to really pay attention to it, didn't you? You did, and also you had to be really careful not to make the clicking noise yep. as well. And the DJs were very naughty, and they always knew Talk that. that that's what we were trying to do at home. They talked over the intro. And so they the would record. always yep. talk over the intro. Yep. No, and now you can just stream it on Spotify. Spotify yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're sounding really old here. <laughs> exactly. If you, could, if you could go back, if you could be a teenager in the 1980s, what do you think you would most have enjoyed about that? Um, <laughs> that's quite a hard question because probably nothing. I think life is better <laughs> full stop. Nowadays, for young people, I'm not sure why I'd want, you know, listening to sort of the stuff my parents went through, um, you know, in the 70s and 80s. I mean, why would I exchange my life now for that? Flares. I mean, why true. would you go back to 70s music and flares? Ooh, you know, things like the blackouts and, you know, life was just, life is so much better now for young people. We have everything we could possibly need, so many more opportunities. Um, but also, I think what's great is um, what social media gives you is the opportunity to find your tribes as well, you know, whether you're, uh, you know, LGBT, there's always always people there for you out there in the ether, even if they're not in your so home, you can connect in your easier. village, you can connect with your tribes. And I think that's a real boon, actually. Yeah, was it, is there anything that you miss from the 80s? Oh, miss from the 80s? Oh, well, I've got a bit of a soft spot for 80s music, but then I think, again, that's showing my age. But, but you can stream that on Spotify. Exactly, exactly. So, actually, no, I'm glad I'm old enough to have seen some amazing technology things. Like, you know, I remember watching the moon landings with my dad, so I'm glad I'm old enough for that. But go back to, no, I'm very happy with where we are now. Yeah. Good to talk to both of you. Thank you Thank very you. much indeed for joining us on Sky News this afternoon. What did I miss most about the 1980s? Um, the launch of Sky News. See what I did there? Coming up in just.